from San Diego State University and today I'm going to walk you through the process of setting up a practitioner focused media assessment or what they would call on the academic side content analysis. So the first thing that you should think of when you're doing a media assessment is to think of exactly what is the time frame and the sampling frame, to use a, a methodology uh, phrase there, what is the time frame and sampling frame that I want to use for this media assessment? So in this, in this, I mean for you to think through that I want to look at newspaper um, reporting from this date to that date, and that particular newspaper article needs to talk about X, Y, and Z related to my particular topic. That would be my inclusion statement. And then I would also want to say, but if it talks about this, this, or that, then I don't want to analyze that particular article. And that would be my exclusion statement. And so the case is uh, sometimes when you're doing a media assessment, the, the issue is so large and it can be, uh, say, political as well as related to your organization. And maybe you would want to exclude those more political um, sort of higher level types of articles and only focus when they're really talking about your organization. So think through, what do I want to study in order to understand what the media environment is like right now? And think through the time and think through the types of media that you're going to be searching for. So once you have done that, you need to start to create your log of different articles that you are going to analyze. So what I like to do to create my log is um, here I am at the SDSU library website, um, just library.sdsu.edu. If you click on databases and then uh, search databases A to Z, go to L for LexisNexis and then click on LexisNexis Academic. If you're off campus like I am right now, it's going to ask you um, to sign in with your credentials and then it's going to give you access to LexisNexis. Fantastic. So I want to go into advanced options because I don't want just everything that comes up about my article. So I'm going to say that my start date was October 1st of this year and I'm going to go through today. And I'm not going to look for all of these different types because I don't want any legal documents that go to this. I just want newspaper coverage. And then I'm going to say um, caravan. So, oh, that's the source. I don't put anything in the source. I'm going to apply. And then here I'm going to put caravan. So I'm going to be doing, um, I'm pretending that I am the border patrol and I am now doing a search on any article that mentions the immigrant um, caravan that is making its way um, up the up the uh, um, the coast to us. Okay, so um, what I would need to do is look to see. Okay, these are obviously false positives. These have nothing to do with that immigrant caravan uh, that is headed up. So I can just skip those. Um, here we have some coverage from The Guardian out of London, uh, and it is where does Donald Trump's caravan really come from? Um, so this, uh, I'll just say for, for the purposes of this um, video, is one that I would, oh, it's in books. Is this a book? No, okay, it's fine. Um, <coughs> this is a article that I would want to log. So I'm going to really quickly go over to Google Drive and I'm going to create a spreadsheet. So I'm going to create a Google spreadsheet and in my Google spreadsheet I'm going to have um, an ID number, I'm going to have a date, I'm going to have a source, I'm going to have a headline, and I'm going to have a link. And then I'll just make sure that this is a header and then I'm going to start to um, add in items like this. So I don't use this as my link because this will not take me back to this particular article. So I want the direct link to this article, which it wants me to right click 
and copy link address. And then I come back over to here and I paste it in and you can see it's a really long actual link. Great. Um, this is apparently my long headline, longest headline in the world. Great. The source was The Guardian. The date was October 26th. So I'll put just 1026 because I'm doing everything in this current year. And this was just ID number one. Your ID numbers just have to be unique. Uh, and then I would go to the next one. Is this next article about my topic? Caravans are more popular. Nope. This is about uh, cars. Next. Woman's body found after caravan fire. Nope, that's not us. Next. Uh, New Age caravans. Nope, that's not us. Next. So you can see that you are getting um, rid of a lot of false positives. And so even though 998 articles came up, um, it is not necessarily 998 articles that, that are actually about my topic. So this one turned out that this is about it. So this is from um, probably a, a news service. I'm not familiar with this particular outlet, but this looks like it's a news service. And the date is October 16th. So 10-16, and we give it ID number two. And then again for the link, I'm gonna click on this little link icon over here. And then I'm going to right click, copy link address to get the long actual link, not this link, because this is not the actual link. I have the long actual link on my clipboard and there it is. So I create my log. After I have my log, more than likely as I've been going through and looking at articles, I kind of get an idea about what the different talking points are related to my issue. And so at that point, I can start to actually go in and create my code sheet. So for my code sheet, I'm going to again go to my Google Drive and I'm going to go new, down into more, and I'm going to use a Google Form. So for my Google Form, I, see, I am going to use this as my code sheet. So I'm going to call this Order Patrol Caravan Issue Form, Media Assessment. Form. And then I'm going to start to lay out my code sheet. And I want to refresh your memory on this document right here. <clears throat> so this is my anatomy of a code sheet. Every code sheet should have the things that are up top here, demographics and tone. And then on the bottom here, uh, these are going to be things that are specific to your media assessment. So the messages being code, coded as present or absent. Um, the different voices that are mentioned in the article, etc. So the first thing are the demographics, ID number, coder name, date, source, source type, reporter name, things like that, country of origin, you know, um, all types of demographic items are things that every single code sheet will have, and then tone toward your organization um, or, or about the issue is going to be another category that every single code sheet will have. So we can, without even knowing anything about the issue, we can go in here and we can say ID number, which we would get from the log. And this is a short answer. It automatically changed it for me. Fantastic. So then I click the plus over here. And the next one I'm going to do is media outlet where the item was published. And this again is going to be short answer. Perfect. I want to have the type of media outlet. And here I want to say, was this uh, print, as in a newspaper or a magazine? Was this broadcast? Was this uh, web based only, like uh, Huffington Post or Politico or something like that? Was this a wire service? Uh, and those are pretty much the overall types and categories that I would want to code for. Um, I'll put headline. This is going to be short answer. It automatically changed it for me there. And <coughs> what else did I want? 
reporter name. For this one, I don't really care about the reporter name, so I'll be okay there. Um, coder name, I'm the only coder, so that's okay. Oh, date, totally need the date published. And this, I'm going to change to a date. Excellent. So now I'm ready to go into, um, I'll add tone. Normally I put tone all the way at the bottom. And I want to be really specific about tone. I do want it to be multiple choice. And I want it to be, um, we'll start with negative about my organization on the issue. I'll say neutral about my organization on the issue. Or positive about my organization on the issue. Excellent. And then I'll go into the specific items that deal with the issue. Um, so this is where I actually have to be familiar with the coverage of my um, particular topic. And in this case, it was I'm Border Patrol and I am doing a media assessment on the caravans issue. So I'm going to set up a, um, a grid a multiple choice grid. Make sure you set it up as a multiple choice grid. This is the most important thing that you do um, all day. If you don't do this, then when your automatic spreadsheet is created on the back end, it's going to create problems for you. So in my columns, I'm going to have present and absent. And then I'll say things like um, mentioned caravan was en route, um, mentioned asylum for immigrants, uh, mentioned immigrants staying in Mexico. So whatever the, t the issues or the, the talking points are that I want to track are going to go in here. And I would just say, Maybe facts about the issue for this one. And then I can do another grid where I'm doing my positive talking points of whatever the Border Patrol is saying about the issue, so the things that they want to see in the press about this. And then I might do another one that says um, com competing messages. And so this one would be if um, uh, someone is saying something um, that is contrary to my organization. And I can have a whole bunch of these different multiple choice grids to measure the messages. This is where you're going to get the majority of your data from because this is, this is going to tell you what the media is saying about your issue. And so from this data, you should be able to understand what uh, the media thinks about your issue, what they're covering um, of it, so what's actually making it into the news, um, which could be good or bad for you, depending on whether it's your message or whether it is a competing message. And it also can um, reveal to you, perhaps of your messages, which ones are not making it through to the media. So either do you have to revise those messages or is there a, a place where you can think, oh, nobody's talking about this. This is an important part of the issue. I need to add this to our talking points. And so that's how you use a media assessment in a situation like this for issues management is to understand what the media environment is and then use that information to write your talking points. Um, so the reason I do this in Google Forms is because what it will do in the back end is actually come in and it will create a um, response uh, spreadsheet for me. I'm just going to create a new spreadsheet. And all of those items, this is, if I were to have coded something, all of that information would appear in here. And then I would just go through and use basic Excel spreadsheet um, uh, computations to analyze it. So if I go back and let's say I'm going to um, preview and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this is item number one media outlet, I'm just going to say Guardian, um, that's a print newspaper, I'm just going to put in stuff here just to, just to get us where 
we can um, see data in there. I'll just pretend it was neutral and I'll say this one, that one, that one, this one, and press submit. So now you can see that it submitted it and boom, here it is in that backend data set, which is housed in your Google Drive. So it automatically, from this form that you created, it automatically, once you pressed submit, populates this form. This Google form, um, Excel spreadsheet for responses is where you are gonna do the data analysis. And then you would count up all of the things that were present and that would tell you uh, how uh, much this particular talking point is being used. And you can use all of your analytic ability to um, cut the data whichever way is most helpful. So wanna remind you that the process is, number one, you need to think about what is the timeline that I'm looking at, what are the types of media sources that I care about, um, systematically collect your articles from those media sources and create a log. Um, from that log, as you're going over it, it's kind of like look through the articles to get a feel for what the different coding categories are, and then create your code sheet. Your code sheet is always going to have demographic variables like um, ID number, coder name, date, source, source type, reporter name, etc. And it's always going to have tone. But then, specific to your project, you're going to put in present, absent, multiple choice grid items that look at the positive messages that your organization wants to um, communicate and also competing messages that might go contrary to what your organization is communicating but still appear in the media because we have to be aware of the bad things that people are saying about us too. And then you can also do voices about who is quoted or mentioned in the particular article. Once you have your code sheet set up and you're pretty happy about it because you've, you've looked at a bunch of articles and you know I pretty much have everything in here that I need to have in here, then you can start coding. And when you start coding, that's when it automatically feeds that data directly into your um, Excel spreadsheet looking type uh, Google Sheet. Um, so. Uh, that is at the point in which you actually do your analysis and you can use um, simple procedures to uh, count how many times the word present is in each of the columns and you use it much like you would use Excel. All right, so I hope that you have uh, excellent success in doing your coding and um, just communicate as best you can, but do it in an informed manner.